Hello, AP Physics, and welcome to Monday. I'm recording this on Wednesday while you guys are taking the test. Hopefully no one needs help and no one pops in in the middle of this recording. Today we're going to do day three of momentum. I'm talking and looking at more at um, different types of collisions. And today you're going to be doing some examples along the way. Like, let me get rid of my face. Boom. Okay. So administrative wise, the homework's there as is usual. Um, and the videos you can watch are there in your classroom. We're going to start by seeing how well you remember what you did on Friday. So here's an example. Conservation momentum question. An object of mass M moves towards the right with a speed of V. It collides head on with an object of mass 3M moving with a speed of V over 3 in the opposite direction. If the two objects stick together, what is the speed of the combined object and of mass 4M after the collision? Uh, go ahead and hit the pause. Let you guys work through that. Um, we'll come back once you finish it up. So how did you do? So the correct answer is zero. The correct answer is zero because if you look at the momentum initial has to equal the momentum final, the momentum initial is mv plus mv negative v over three. And that's going to equal the final, which is 4m times final velocity. Well, mv minus mv is zero. You can't have a negative mass, so you must have a negative, you can't have a zero mass, so you must have a zero velocity, so the final velocity is zero. How'd you do? Hopefully it went really, really well. Let's look at some more examples. Okay, so problem solving strategies. First off, as we've seen time and time again, set up your coordinates. Identify which way is plus and which way is minus and stick to it. Draw a diagram that's going to help you. The free body diagrams were fantastic for forces and energy um, and the like. Draw it out. Identify what's going to happen before and after the collision to try to help you along. Then momentum will always be conserved. So that's really easy. MV initial sum of all the mo momentum's initial is going to be the sum of all the momentum's final. That's easy. That's always always write that down as a possible uh, situation when dealing with collisions. The last thing is what if it's not a um, what if it's not a elastic collision? Well, collisions that are elastic have conservation of energy. This is the modified conservation of energy. The objects one's sum of their velocities is equal to object two's sum of the velocities or I can use the one half mv squared um, sum for elastic collisions. For inelastic collisions, you cannot use this equation. So let's try an example. This was going to take a little bit longer. So we're going to look at two different collisions. You have a five kilogram ball moving in the direction in the to the towards the right with a velocity of plus 2.0 meters per second. On a frictionless table, it collides directly head on with a stationary object of 7.5 kilograms. Find the initial velocities of the ball if the collision is elastic. And then secondly, find the final velocities of the balls if the collision is completely inelastic, which means it will be combined. Um, go ahead and pause the recording for a little bit, allow the students to complete the problem. This one might take a, a little bit, maybe about 10 minutes or so. So let's see how you did. First off, in the elastic situation. In the elastic situation, there are my initial masses and velocities. I'm going to use a little bit of a different designation here for the final, just to make it a little bit easier. I'm going to use this designation of the prime to indicate the final. Um, this dash above the V will indicate the final, oops, the final velocity. So V prime, V prime equals the same as V final. Um, I like using the prime sometimes because the subscripts get out of control real fast. So V prime is going to be the final conditions. 
So conservation momentum exists through elastic collisions. M1 V1 plus M2 V2 equals M1 V1 prime plus M2 V2 prime. Momentum will be conserved. However, initially the second object is at rest, so it has no momentum, leading to M1 V1 equals equal to M1 V1 prime plus M2 V2 prime. Conservation of energy. I'm going to go ahead and give in and use the modified equation, mostly because of space on this slide. Um, the initial plus the final velocity for object number one is going to be equal to the initial plus the final velocity for object two. We can only use this equation because it is an elastic collision. If this were an inelastic collision, we could not use this equation because conserve energy is not conserved when dealing with an inelastic collision. The initial velocity of the second object, again, is zero, so we can get rid of that, which leads us to V2 prime is equal to V1 plus V1 prime. So we're going to go ahead and substitute that over here. We're going to, for sub V2 prime, we're going to substitute V1 plus V1 prime, and then we're going to work to solve. So we're going to distribute the M2, push all your V1s to one side, V1 and V1, Push all your V2, V1 primes to the other side. Pull out your M's. M1 minus M2 times V equals M1 plus M2 times V prime. Solve for V prime. And plug the numbers in and get a speed. So the velocity of the object one after the impact would be a negative 0 0.40 meters per second. It will bounce back. It's gonna hit the ball, it's gonna bounce back. Then what about V2? Well, that's cool. You're gonna plug it into this equation here, the one in the middle. And I did it up here because of space. So V2 is V1 plus V1 prime. V1 was two, V1 prime was negative 0.4. So V2 is gonna be 1.6 meters per second. Hopefully that went well. Let's talk about the possibility of an inelastic collision, a perfectly inelastic collision. So same starting conditions, five kilogram ball moving at two meters per second, 7.5 kilogram ball moving zero. And I want to know what's the speed in the end. Have We have conservation momentum, M1 V1 equals M2 V2 dot 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 and still V2 is zero, so that becomes a zero. Still get the same starting equation. However, we don't have a elastic collision, so we can't use the conservation of, of energy. So V1 is equal M1 V1 divided by um, M1 plus M2, because in the end, something I skipped here, sorry, in the end, M1 and M2 are combined, and they will have the same speed. This is a perfectly inelastic collision. So this whole thing will be moving towards the right at a speed of 0 0.80 meters per second. That's the entire object. So how'd that, go, how'd that go? That go pretty well? Hopefully it did. Now we're going to segue into another application, kind of a cool application, of an inelastic collision it's called a ballistic pendulum. Here's a picture of the typical diagram of a ballistic pendulum. Bullet is moving towards a block just dangling on a string or some type of a cord. It hits the rock, it, it hits, right, hits the block, it embeds in the block, and then it slides up. Um, I got a video here that I want to show you of some guy, a physics teacher, showing how to do this. So let me, again, I'm going to hit the pause for a second, get the video up and then show you. Okay, no better way to get demonetized than to show a video on YouTube of another video on YouTube. So I guess I'm not making any money off this slide. Anyway, here we go. This is an um, example of somebody doing a ballistic pendulum. It's actually a part of a, looks like a test question or a quiz question, homework question. So it has a lot of data in it. Thank you.
Okay, so very often you see this ballistic pendulum done with some interesting, very um, physics class objects. That was one of the few out there that I found that was short and sweet and showed a ballistic pendulum with somebody using an actual rifle. Anyway, ballistic pendulums are kind of cool because, hey, we're going to incorporate what we did last unit with what we're doing this unit because whatever energy is going into the block down here, the energy combination of the bullet in the block, um, you're suddenly going to get a increase in potential energy of this block as it moves up. So we can figure out how fast the bullet was going right before it hit the block. So let's take a look. So here's a ballistic pendulum example. A ballistic pendulum can be used to measure the speed of a projectile such as a bullet, which we just saw. The ballistic pendulum shown consists of a 2.5 kilogram block of wood suspended by a wire of negligible mass, i.e., we're going to ignore the mass. A 0 0.0100 kilogram bullet is fired, fired into the block, and the block will, with the bullet in it, will swing a maximum height of 0.65 meters. That's pretty high. Find the speed at which the bullet is fired, assuming the air resistance is negligible. If you watch that video, you saw that, that that gun was right next to the block intentionally, so the air resistance would be negligible. So let's see where we're going. We actually have here a inelastic collision, a perfectly inelastic collision, because that ball, that bullet, is hitting the block. So how do we solve this? Well, since it's an inelastic collision, we're going to do it very, very similarly to the one you did last. We have the mass M is 0 0.0100 kilograms. Big M is 2.5 kilograms. And H, it moves up a total of 0.65 meters. So first, looking at what happens after, after the collision, after the collision, not the collision itself. The collision is not going to have a conservation of energy. But after the collision, the block itself with the bullet embedded in it will guide up and will have a conservation of energy. The kinetic energy, when the bullet embeds itself into the block, which means the block bullet combination will have a speed and that kinetic energy will be the same as the kinetic energy of that block bullet combination when it gets to the top of the swing. So one half MB squared, is equal to MGH, the block bullet combination has the same mass, so we can get rid of the masses. So V squared equals 2 GH, or velocity is equal to square root of 2 GH. We know that the um, height was 0.65 meters. So we plug those numbers in, and we find out that the block bullet combination was moving at 3.57 meters per second after the collision. So let's find out how fast the bullet was moving. Since before the collision, or as part of the collision, there is a conservation of momentum, we're going to look at the mass of the bullet times the initial mass of the bullet is going to be equal to, because the block was staying still, the combined mass of the bullet and the um, block and times or times the velocity that you have in the end, which we just solved for, which was 3.7, 3.57. So the initial velocity of the bullet is going to be big M plus little m, the mass of the block bullet combination, 
divided by m, the mass of the bullet, times the velocity of the mass bullet combination during the swing. Plug the numbers in, the bullet was leaving the gun at an astounding 890 meters per second. This is a very, very, very typical and very classic example of how to use conservation of momentum and conservation of energy as based on the previous unit. So here's what we're gonna do for the remainder of the class. Here's a challenge problem. What I've done is I've set up another one of those Google Forms in your classroom for you to be able to test to see whether you can do this problem correctly. Check your answers. Here we go. A ball is attached to one end of a wire and the other end is fastened to the ceiling. The wire is held horizontally and the ball is released from rest. It swings downward and strikes a block, initially at rest on a horizontal frictionless surface. Let's keep friction out of this for a while. Air resistance is also negligible. And the collision is assumed to be elastic. The masses of the ball and the block respectfully are the ball is 1.60 kilograms and the block is 2.40 kilograms. And the length of the wire is 1.2 meters. What you wanna find to get this correctly is the velocity of the ball just before the collision, the ball just after the collision, and then the block just after the collision. So I'm gonna make sure you realize that, that we're talking about this direction is gonna be positive. This direction towards the right is gonna be positive. When putting your answers into the Google form, go ahead and um, make sure you only put the value with the correct sign. If it's negative, put negative, if it's positive, it doesn't really matter, um, to a reasonable amount of significant figures. Good luck. Um, I will see you guys tomorrow, Tuesday. You guys have a fantastic time playing with this challenge problem, and we'll talk a little bit more about how to solve it tomorrow. Toodles. Bye-bye. Have a good day.